And welcome into America's Retirement Headquarters. I'm Nolan Baker. I'm joined here with William Hurley. He is up from our Ann Arbor office, so I should say down. Good to have you down. Thanks for having me. Yes, we've got a great presentation today. We're going to be talking about how President Biden could impact your retirement. This is the second part in our series where we're going to be talking about a one-year recap and an update into the economy and the markets under President Biden. And of course, for other series and other information, this is the part two of a four part series. You can see all of our videos. If you go over to YouTube and just type in America's Retirement Headquarters. Today in this topic, in the next couple of minutes, we're gonna cover looking back at the market since the election. Here's our important disclosures and contact information. And I encourage you, if you'd like to read over the entire disclosure and contact information, simply pause this video and you can reference and write down any of our contact information or find out more information about our firm. Now, Bill, if I look back and I look at this chart here showing what the market gains have been overall, what we've saw in the last year, the markets have been extremely strong. Yeah, a little bit of volatility, but upward trend. Yeah, we did. We had a little bit of volatility in the month of September, but uh, of course, October, that continued mm -hmm. to rally back. And prior to that, you know, again, strong results starting from the election, which is interesting because if you go back right before the election, a lot of the mainstream media would have said that they expect the market to have a pretty major sell-off had Trump lost the presidency. Right. Well, I guess the media is not always right. This is true, and I think that's why it's important to stay tuned to the next couple of minutes because what we're going to do is we're going to give you our opinion and also going to share with you uh, some opinions of people maybe you do want to listen to about the market to be able to decide if you should make any changes within your portfolio and steps to implement with where we're at one year into the election. The first thing is, is I uh, go back to a, a quote, and I think it was by Daniel Boone. And what they said, I think what he said is, history doesn't always repeat itself, but it oftentimes rhymes. That's a pretty cool quote. Yeah, and if we look at this chart here, what this chart would show us is this chart would show us the second year of an election cycle. So again, this data is showing 116 years worth of data. So you've got a wealth of information, and all they did is they took the second year of an election, laid it on top of every second year in an election, and that's what generates this chart. So what it would show is that coming up, we may be in for a little bit of volatility. The dating period's over. Yeah, I would think that that's probably true. And if you look at you know what's being talked about in the news, in the media, with some of the, the feelings that Americans have, I would say that's probably fairly accurate with how a lot of people feel you know, about this administration. So volatility is not always necessarily a bad thing. Volatility can actually create opportunity. Overall, though, history would tell us that the second year of a presidential term has historically been a good year. So then I would also say we should take a look and say, what does a professor of economics at Yale have to say about the research in the market? So I was blessed that I had the opportunity to meet with Dr. Robert Schiller, um, you know, before COVID had ultimately shut down a lot of things. And he shared with me a little bit about his thoughts and feedback on the market. Uh, on the screen here, you can see his resume as far as being able to get some information. But if there's one thing, Bill, that I would highlight, it's towards the bottom. In 2013, uh, Dr. Schiller was the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economics with Science for his evaluation of asset prices in the market is about the only thing he needs on his resume. Correct. So if we looked at what Dr. Schiller says, his strategy was based upon what's it called the Schiller PE ratio. So history would show Dr. Schiller's CAPE PE ratio, it can be helpful in determining the valuations in the market and where risk is elevated. He did say, and I think one of the things that stuck with me though, is even at the conference I was at, is he said, you know, even an overweight person can live to age 90. So it's not saying that we can predict the market and what's going to happen in the next three months or even the next year. In fact, I'm surprised but thankful how great the markets have been one year into this election. 
But if we look at this chart, what we can see is using history as a guideline, the risk is getting very elevated with where we're at right now within the market. Again, using the median averages of, let's say, 16 or 17 percent, the ratio that we have, you know, currently within the market as of October 19th, uh, we're currently at 38.49 percent. With a max of 44, we should probably be paying close attention. It is. It's time to pay close attention. You know, be, again, grateful of the rewards that we've had and been blessed with in the last year, but be good stewards of our money and making a decision on how we want to reposition those assets. And also, if we use history as a guideline, what it would tell us is that bull and bear markets, bulls, as you can see on the chart here, are defined as times that are when the markets are generally going up. And then a bear market are the ones in red defined as times that the market is generally going down. Now, down below, what I did is we circled the times that the P-E ratio was elevated. And what you would notice is that the times in red that are circled, the P-E ratio that Dr. Schiller has been fairly accurate at indicating that the market performance going forward may not be as good as the time circled in green when the P-E ratio is lowered. So my question for those of you that are watching today's presentation is, is your portfolio prepared for another crash? If we look at it, you know, what we can see in this chart here is the last time that we had a crash in the market, you know, the market was down 53%. In the early 2000s, we had the market was down 49%. So both times wiping out nearly 50% of an investor's gain. Now, keep in mind, this is the S&P 500 index, and it's an unmanaged index that you can't invest directly into. So the results of your portfolio are obviously going to be dependent upon, you know, how your portfolio is allocated. But that's where I leave the big question mark. The question mark is how much of your portfolio can you prepare to have go down in retirement time? This, Bill, it gets even more crucial for folks that are in retirement time and those folks that are taking withdrawals. In this chart here, what I do is I show uh, two different investors, and both of these investors I'm simply showing an average rate of return of 6% and showing what their retirement looks like in different environments from age 65 ultimately to age 90. Now, what you can see on the left-hand side in the green section, the investor who experiences positive returns in the early years had a much greater success, in fact, ended up at age 90 having a larger portfolio balance than what they started with. On the right-hand side, the investor in the brown simply experienced the declines in the early years of the market. And what you notice on this chart, that that particular retiree ended up running out of money at age 84. 12 years. Yeah, so the sequence of returns risk, I think, becomes a bigger risk for people that are retirees. If you're close to or in retirement time and you're taking withdrawals off of your portfolio, I think the next couple of years of the risk of the market become even bigger and more important to evaluate. You know, for younger investors, it may not be as big of an issue. And having a bucketing strategy. Yeah, and that's what I would say when we talk about not waiting and wondering, you know, how to get educated and to take action. As you talk about the bucketing strategy at our office, what we've called that is the independent income system. Here's a visual of what that independent income system and the steps to take as a result of today's presentation is to evaluate the risk in your investments. Stress test your plan in different environments to make sure that if a market crashes or rising interest rates, you have the portfolio aligned to what your individual goals and objectives are. Consider rebalancing some of the money you may need in the next one to five years so it has little to no market risk associated with it. And build in investments that are designed to fight off long-term inflation. Bill, I know you know a couple of the different tools, but maybe as we wrap up today's show, you want to talk about some of the tools that we can help uh, those watching today with. Well, we use a tool called Right Capital. It'll help us evaluate your overall uh, readiness for retirement. 
Um, we also have the tax clarity software to let us know if you're overexposed to tax risks. And then we use a, a tool called Riskalyze that'll allow us to go in and help develop a portfolio to try to remove as many of the known unknowns as possible. So great tools that are available for you. Just know that we're a resource and today let's talk. You know, what I would encourage you to do is just schedule a time to come in for a strategy session. So on the screen you can see our number here in Ohio and also our Michigan location as well as our contact information. And we're talking a little bit about the markets and the economy and why it's so crucial while the market's at record highs, you're taking and stress testing your portfolio to look to make sure that you have it put together to try to achieve the outcomes that you want over the next year. Thanks for tuning in. If you like today's show, I'd encourage you to listen to the other segments that we're talking about on One Year into Biden. All you need to do is just swing over to our YouTube channel, type in America's Retirement Headquarters, and we've got more information to kind of help lead you down the right path. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Nolan Baker, joined here by William Hurley. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.